Some of you have probably been wondering, why is it that I always compare my other boots to my Alden Modified Last boots? Why is it that I've been raving about this boot for the longest time? In this video, I'm going to try to explain my reasons for why these are my favorite boots that I've found so far. So my journey with these actually began with the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill boot in natural Chrome XL. Years ago, I had so many opportunities to buy a pair of these Higgins boots, but I always delayed it or just for whatever reason just continued to put it off. Eventually, I ran out of time, they were discontinued, and I still had some opportunities, but I waited too long and I missed out on them. I did eventually find a pair of these, but they were quite defective for several reasons and I ended up selling them off. What I did not know was that Alden actually made a boot that was in many ways far superior for me. And that's what I got with the 45625H boot from Alden. I know that nobody is going to remember that style number. So an easier way to name these boots is to call them plain toe boots on the modified last in natural Chrome XL. So to begin with, these are actually pretty similar to the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill. They use the same natural Chrome XL pull-up leather from Horween, Chicago. They use the same beige contrast stitching on the uppers. One difference here though is that the stitching where the welt is is definitely more on the lighter side, more noticeable than it is with the Higgins Mill. And of course these have a leather sole rather than day night. But just generally speaking, they fill the same kind of role as the natural Higgins Mill. Now, let's talk about the modified last. One of the biggest reasons why I'm such a huge fan of these boots. So, who was this last designed for specifically? Alden says that the modified last was built to follow the anatomically correct shape of most men's feet. But of course, feet come in all shapes and sizes so would this really apply to all men? Even though the modified last is available in E and triple E widths, I would say it has more to do with the shape of your foot, especially around the waist area. If you have a more standard width or narrow type of waist, I think you'll have a better chance of success. If your foot is very wide at the waist area and doesn't have a lot of curve to it, this last may not work. I myself am an 8.5C on the Brannock device, although I wear almost everything in 8D or sometimes 8.5D. But also, this last is best for people who do not have entirely flat feet. Your feet can still have a collapsed arch, just like mine do, but if your feet are extremely flat, this is probably not a good last because it has a more gathered shape where the arch is. It's definitely not a flat last like the Alden Berry or the Allen Edmonds 1757. You will notice at the outsole that where the waist is, it's very narrow. It's unusual to see a last become that narrow at the waist area, but this is because some of your foot is actually going to rest on the upper. The boots provide excellent arch support for people that have the appropriate shape of their foot. Because the modified last follows the natural shape of feet, it's going to have a slimmer look to it, but it does this in a way without looking too narrow or too dressy. The result of this is that the ball area is actually plenty wide. It may not look so, but it is. The length of the modified is pretty consistent with the berry last, as you can see. The berry might look slightly longer here, but that's only because there's a storm welt on this pair versus a flat welt on the boots. Many people have described the modified last as having a narrow heel. I would argue that in my experience, it is on the more slimmer side, but not as narrow as the berry last in the same size. That's just been my experience. One difference between the modified and the berry last is that with the modified last, I actually feel that when you size down a half size, it actually does fit entirely correctly and consistent. With the berry last, I find that going down a half size is not entirely perfect because I find the heel is just a touch on the narrow side. 
and the heel to the ball where the widest part of the foot is, I find myself just slightly forward in the berry last. What that means is that I think the berry was actually intended to be true to size in terms of length and the heel fit, but there's so much volume in the shoe that most people go down a half size to make it work. In other words, I could probably get away with going true to size with the berry, but with the modified last, there's no way I could do it. Despite these small things about the berry last, it's still a very good last for me. I think the berry is a very nice last and they really designed a good shape to it that will appeal to a lot of people and it will fit most foot types. Also, the modified last is a very deceptive looking last. You will first look at it and you might think, this is a narrow last. Or you might think, these boots are gonna be too small for my feet. That's the way it appears, but only because the space is so efficiently used throughout the last. No space is wasted. That's why it appears to be more narrow and small. But when I put these on my own feet, I was so surprised how well they fit and how efficient all the space was used. Now, the waist area of this boot it actually is similar in some ways to the Allen Edmonds 65 last. What happens is that it hugs your waist area very nicely. The upper actually cradles your foot in a way that there's no excess space or extra unwanted room. And that's a rare thing in last that I just do not come across when I try on boots. The same thing happens with the Allen Edmonds 65 for me. And that's the reason why I own so many shoes on that last. It just works really well for me. But another major difference between the 65 and the modified is that the Alden modified last has a much higher instep. The 65 is a pretty low volume instep. It's well known that that's a problem for a lot of men who use the 65. Whereas the modified corrects this problem for people who need more in-step room like myself. Also, the modified last has a fairly narrow heel where the sole is, so if you prefer something that's more wide, perhaps you want more balance with your shoes and boots, then perhaps look at the berry or the true balance last instead of the modified. In a lot of ways, the modified last is like taking the Allen Evans 65 last and improving upon the good things about it. It has a similar overall length. The heel fit is similar. The ball area is actually pretty similar in width. A lot of people complain that the 65 last is narrow at the ball, but I disagree. In my experience, I've always felt that it's on the more generous side, and I find it more roomy than other lasts like the 511. But getting back to the modified last, it's going to feel similar to how the 65 last feels in the ball area. But one difference is that the modified last goes much more straight where your big toe is, whereas the 65 last tapers in a little bit more. In neither of these lasts do I experience any toe crunch, but I'm just saying that it's possible you could get it in the 65 last it's very unlikely that you would get it in the modified last because there's that extra room where the big toe sits and then there's not a strong taper where the other toes are. Will the modified last work for all men? No, I don't think it will. I think those with extremely wide feet, it's going to be impossible. I think this last is better suited for men with standard width or narrow width feet. As you can see here, there's no wasted space at the waist area. It's very efficiently used. Everything lines up where it should. There's excellent arch support with both the insole and also the upper. And as you can see, as I lace up the boots, there's plenty of width at the instep. In fact, these boots just seem to be you know, made for my feet. How could one wear this boot in natural Chrome XL? Well, I've used it with just about everything except for a very formal type of wear. I would not wear it with a suit. There are so many better options for that. But with just about everything else, you can make it work with almost anything except for maybe certain kinds of oranges or you know colors that are too similar to the color of the boot. 
Dark greens work really well. Or you can wear it with these lighter blue chinos. Even this lighter tan color works pretty well. And of course, you can wear it with any kind of jeans or denim. Natural Chrome XL is a leather that's very susceptible to getting dings, dented, scratched, and it also changes color. It's going to be darker over time, at least in the natural shade. And my pair has definitely darkened up over the last two years. If you compare these pictures from when I first got them and then look at it now, you can definitely tell that it's darkened up quite a bit. And there's blemishes here and there, but nothing that bothers me. I just use a little bit of Bic 4 on these now and then without trying to overdo it. And another thing to be aware of is that these thicker type of creases are likely to develop over time with Chrome XL. As far as the Chrome XL lottery goes, I thought this pair came out pretty well. I'm very satisfied with them. These beige laces that you see, these are about 5 millimeters in width. These are directly from Alden. I actually just emailed Alden and asked them if I could purchase some of these laces. And they were kind enough to just mail me two of them at no charge. So thank you Alden for taking care of your customers like that. I appreciate it. And of course I think the beige laces work so much better than any kind of darker brown on these. It just adds a perfect match to the welt stitching and a nice contrast to the boots. The boots also come with the standard Alden sock liner at the heel and of course a steel shank underneath this gives the boots excellent support they're very very comfortable boots these are the kind of boots that i could wear on my feet for the whole day and do a lot of standing and not have any issues the fore part of the insole is alden's leather insole although it may not be a full grain leather it still is a kind of leather insole it's very comfortable it really has no break in and it has a nice fuzzy feel to it, kind of like how Crockett and Jones insoles feel, although not exactly. And yes, these boots do contain some leather board. There's leather board in the heel stack, and there's probably leather board at the heel counter, which is a very nice, strong heel counter. It's very strong and supportive. But does the leather board bother me? No, I don't really care. I don't want to talk too much about the leather board issue. There are other videos out there where you can uh, look into that if you want. And of course, these come with a nice double leather outsole, which is excellent. It feels great on your feet. The only disadvantage is that these are not going to be the best choice for rain. In some ways, I would have preferred a day-night sole or something similar, but the advantage of having double leather is that it's more comfortable than rubber, at least to me. But having the leather sole and the leather or leather board heel stack just looks amazing. The overall weight of these boots is on the lighter side. It's a little more heavy than Allen Edmonds, but it's not as heavy as Grant Stone. So if you prefer boots that are going to be lighter on your feet, these are an excellent choice. I got these from the Shoe Mart in 2020, and at that time I thought they were plenty expensive, and now they're even more than that. But the big question is, are they worth it? I can't give you an answer in black and white terms. I would just say that I would probably not want to buy more of these in the future because they are so expensive, and I do have an additional pair on the Modified Last already in a different kind of leather. But I don't have any regrets about buying these because the design, the shape of the boots because of the last, the fit, the comfort, the support, everything about these is so ideal for me and I'm yet to find anything that suits me better so far. So in other words, 
If this last really fits you well, like it does for me, and if you like everything else that I mentioned to the point that you're willing to part with $600, then yes, they're worth it. But I completely understand that a lot of people would be hesitant or just refuse. And there's nothing wrong with going that route either. There are definitely many excellent boots that are in the $200 to $400 range as well. These boots come with the standard five hole eyelets and also the four speed hooks that Alden often uses. One thing I like about Alden's hardware is that it tends to be a little bit smaller than some of the other brands. I prefer that with my boots. I don't like the hardware to be too large or to be too far spread out. After wearing these for the last two years, I would say I wear them at least two or three times a month. They have just become more and more comfortable. They're at the point now where it feels like I'm just putting on a baseball glove on my feet. So, how would I rate these boots? Well, let's rate in a couple of different categories. If I'm just going to rate the construction and the quality of materials, I would give it an 8 out of 10. Overall, it's very, very good. It's very well constructed. You could criticize some of the quality of the materials. Yes, you could say that the materials may not be the best in every way, but the overall construction is still excellent. How would I rate the last of the boots? I would give this a 10 out of 10. This is just an almost perfect last for me and by far the best last that I've found so far for my feet. But of course, your mileage may vary. This last could be a disaster for you. The berry last might be better for you. This is just my own subjective opinion. How would I rate the comfort? Well, I would give these a 10 out of 10. They are the most comfortable boots that I have as comfortable as the Higgins Mill, as comfortable as anything that I've tried so far. How would I rate the boots overall considering everything that I've already mentioned? I would give them a 9 out of 10 because I do not believe there's such thing as a perfect boot, but these do come very close. There's only a few minor things with these that would prevent me from giving them a 10, but I am the most satisfied with this pair of boots more than any other pair in my collection. But the cost of them is one thing that would prevent me from just going out and buying a bunch of pairs of these because, let's face it, they are becoming more and more expensive. I'm not saying they're not worth it, but the price is the price and it is something I have to consider. So, like it or not, that's how it is. And I have to decide, is it worth it? or can I live without them and pursue something else? Do I recommend Alden as a brand? Yes, I mean, they are expensive, but they're still a really well-made brand. I love the brand. I like that they're made in the USA, more so than Allen Edmonds, in fact. And although it's rare, I encourage anyone out there to look for deals on Alden, such as eBay and other third-party sites you might be able to find something at a discount. It is possible. I hope you got something useful out of this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.